Hey guys, I just overlooked something that I had uh, done on all the other tanks. If you notice, there's one thing that this tank is missing, and that's um, a number to identify it. Uh, it usually goes right there on the um, access door. Um, I've got the decal right here, but here is the problem. Um, decals, whatever decal you apply, um, they usually like a glossy surface to go down on. Um, well, the problem that you have here is that I've already applied a semi-gloss, but I've washed over it. So what may happen if we put the decal on there, uh, there'll be air bubbles behind it, and so the carrier film will show. So what we do is we get a little micro-scale gloss, all right, and then we take our one of our brushes, or we take a Q-tip. I'll just use a Q-tip. And then we just uh, take it and brush it on our door here. Now what's going to happen, it's going to make this little area of the, um, of the model very glossy. I want to make sure that we don't leave any fibers behind of the um, Q-tip. So that uh, we don't have any hair stuck there. But this is good. Now a little, uh, just a little coat. It's not going to take much. Get the little excess up. All right, bam, there you go. So let's go to the other side, do the same thing. And then this is gonna have to be left to dry for a little bit because we're gonna go ahead and put water right back over the top of it um, when we apply the decal down. You see what I'm doing though? I just went right over the door with the little gloss and this will give something for the decal to lay down on without being, uh, without showing all the carrier film behind it and that way we'll have a nice flat decal and then we can just go back and apply a little bit of wash right over the top of it and it'll blend right in with the rest of the tank and it'll look like we had it on there from day one let's get rid of all these little air bubbles There you go. Okay guys, you got here our uh, washes have dried. And you can see that looks like we got one dirty tank. Um, it has made all of the uh, rivets pop out. Um, got a little extra rusting and stuff around here. It's really made the, um, the skull here. I mean, that looks a lot better than it did. It used a little dry brushing, but that's okay. If you can see our area right here is glossy as compared to the rest of the model because we're getting ready to lay down our decals. But let's take a quick spin so you can see it from all angles. There's the business end, as it were. Get that straight on. Here's the other side. And then here's the back. Still appropriate amounts of dirtiness. And then here's the other one. Shut the door on that. So here you go. So you can see right here, you know, just the uh, just the little streaks makes a big difference. Makes it look nice and dirty. You know, I'm kind of tempted just to stop here um, because I really like the way these look. And I think what I may do is go ahead and put a little bit of um, pastel pastel powders on them, just to give them a little dust, and then we're gonna call these things done. Because you don't want to overdo it. You know, it's uh, one thing. Um, to have it nice and dirty and then another thing just to totally overdo it and wreck it and then there's what the inside looks like can't really see that because it's nice and dark in there but we got the insides done and I think they're gonna look all right so uh, let me change batteries on the camera and we'll be right back with the decals on If you are a model of building and you have not yet discovered 
micro saw and micro set you really should look into it because of the fact that these are very vital in putting down good decals if you always had a problem with your decals looking like crap you probably weren't using this stuff um, the red bottle micro saw um, softens the decals and makes them conform to the surface that you're putting them on and then micro set improves the adhesion it's like the glue stuff that's on the back of them um, you can make um, decals bend around complex curves you can make them uh, do all kind of stuff uh, with this um, I use them and I apply them with a tooth or a q-tip a toothpick so um, basically this what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the micro set first and then um, put it onto the model. And you take the blue stuff, put it on the model, and then you apply the um, decal. And you make sure it's in good position. Then you brush a little of the micro set on and allow it to dry. And what the micro set's gonna do is basically, um, it kinda, I, I don't wanna say melts but it allows the decal to conform to whatever surface it's on. So here we go. Put a little micro set on. So I'm a Q-tip to the side. I put my decal in a little water over here. They slide right off. Maybe a little bit more water. Give it a second. Now, I, I know I said this already, but what we're going to do, since I had forgot to put the decals on before we put the wash on, is that we, um, we're going to go back and wash right over the top of them. So here we go. Booyah. It's down. There you go. Nice number 34. Now you'll notice, we do is we take our micro set Q-tip and we roll it. And this way we work out any air bubbles that are underneath because if you have air bubbles underneath your decals what you're gonna find is that it silvers and what do I mean by silvering I mean that you will be able to see I don't think I have an example handy you'll be able to see the carrier film on the model um, and that's not good it doesn't look good so while that side's drying, we're going to go over here and roll this side. Alright guys, here, check this out. Our uh, decal is dried. I went through and I chipped it up with um, just a number 11 blade. Make it look a little worn, because you know, if this is the handle that you're opening and closed, the paint's going to rub off, and that's cool. Here on my Q-tip is a little devil in mud, so what we're going to do to blend this into the rest of the model is take the devil in mud and just go over the... Um, Go over the decal, let's just get a little extra on there. Get my Q-tip sucking all this up. And we're just going to filter it. You're just going over it, you're just knocking the white down to make it look a little dirty. And then in a second that's going to dry and it's going to look just like it was there when we did the rest of the model. So, Alright guys, here we go. We've taken some of our um, rust colored pastel chalk which I bought this at my local hobby store um, in this container um, but you can also um, use like uh, these square artist pastels and then you just scrape off your pastels and use them and maybe we may come back and put some exhaust on with those all you do is take your pastel get a little bit on your brush knock off the excess and then you're just going to come in and slightly brush it on, getting it all over the place. So now, if you go, if you want to go heavy, then you put more on your brush. If you want to go light, like I'm doing here, then you uh, don't put as much. But like I said, if you mess it up, it's not really a problem. We just come back in with water, and we um. and we take it right out. Alright guys, here we go again. Let's see, so at this point, we've got the tank covered in dust. And you can tell that there are parts of it, like, you know, here, where there's a lot of it. So what I like to do is I have this very large um, brush 
and I like to go back and just give her a dusting off. And what I'm doing here is I'm knocking off a lot of the excess. See up here at the top where it's all pulled in, but if you look, it doesn't really remove the dust from the places where you want it to be. It just gets off the big piles of it. Of course, I'm not really bearing down. I'm just going nice and light over it. It takes the dust off the high points and it um, keeps the dust in the low points where you want it to be. See, I think that looks great. So, um, this looks like one well used tank. If we have to go back now with the Q-tip and do some spots, we can go back in, like I've already showed you. And uh, we can get the uh, big excess off. But I think this tank is actually going to be just fine the way it is. You know, always work a little bit less. Do less first, and then you can work your way to more later. And see, look how our decals are. Those things are blended in. You can't even tell they weren't there when we did the whole tank. So. Alright guys, for our last step. Before we move on to the flat coating. Is remember I told you about the oil wash from before? We're going to go back now. We're going to just touch it to a few parts. Now this is um, an oil based uh, paint mixed with terpaline which will not mix with our um, acrylic finishing that we have on here and if you see what I'm doing I'm just touching it to the tops of these details and you can see it'll run where it needs to go Booyah. and with the uh, dust and dirt it kind of just makes it stand out a little bit more um, if in nature this occurs like this, I don't know, but it sure makes your models look snazzy. It makes them stand out just a little bit more. A little detail comes to life, and I like the look of it. And the oil is it's mixed pretty thin. This is a burnt umber is what the uh, color is. So it gives just kind of an oil, um, oily look to it. And it flows really well. I'm not sure with the camera how well you can see. But if I touch it, you can see it just follows the line. And so there it goes.